How do people not know that this is uh, this is still happening? I know that we have really low trust polls regarding the media, mm -hmm. but who is still watching? Like you watch, uh, for instance, I think lately we've been seeing that CNN. Uh, their their viewer rates going down. They say it plummeted down to 450,000. And I'm reading that, and I'm like, who in the world are these 450,000 people <laughs> watching CNN on a daily basis? Exactly. Just the airports and bowling alleys. <laughs> That's kind of Hospitals. Right. Yeah, raising the numbers. I mean, almost nobody's like watching it. But you made an interesting point. You made a reference to the Council on Foreign Relations. And 100 years ago, uh, a little, little more than 100 years ago, the Council on Foreign Relations kind of uh, did a study. Uh, at, you know, what were the 25 most influential newspapers in the United States? And they systematically bought controlling interests in all of those newspapers. And then they basically could control you know, the narrative, what, what news stories were propagated, what narratives were propagated, what themes were, were hit upon and in a very structured way. And so that started with newspapers. Then of course it went into radio when radio came, came of age and went into television. And so, I mean, since its very foundation, mass media has been used to manipulate the public. There's um, one of the, the godfathers of propaganda, Edward Bernays, he wrote a book called Crystallizing Public Opinion. And I think it was in 1926 or thereabouts. And he said that for the first time since Aristotle, we have a new form of government beyond the classical forms of government of like monarchy, aristocracy, republic. Um, and he said, this would be, you know, like technocracy rule by propaganda ruled by media manipulation, you know, and, and it's the first time it could happen because it's the first time we had mass media, you know, and so he was talking very, very explicitly. He said in that book as well that the, the ruling class was the safest now as it has ever been, you know, because the public is is being, you know, manipulated and divided. So they can't really unify to to ever go against, you know, the, the aristocrats like they might in the Middle Ages. And uh, he said, so they're the safest they are now. And by the way, before I forget, just really quickly, and I know I'm rambling, but uh, there was a book called, um, what was it? It was uh, Democracy, uh, Capitalism, and Socialism or something. And it was by Joseph Schumpeter. I'm, I'm mangling the title, but Joseph Schumpeter was an Austrian economist. And he made a really interesting point. He said in there that um, mass college like had all these effects. And he he basically was echoing Gustave Le Bon from the 1890s in France. And both of them, both men said that mass college had really destabilizing sociological effects because it took people out of the productive economy, right? The, the people who make things, so the, the trades and all that. And it, and it channels them into white collar jobs. But the problem is there's not enough white collar jobs. So there's mass unemployment, there's mass, mass underemployment. And, and Le Bon in particular said that it leads to the worst forms of socialism because because they become embittered because they 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 basically have no skills and they're you know they're poor and they're they they, they think they're too good for work and so Schumpeter makes that same point in the 1930s he says that you're going to get a bunch of disgruntled people and they can't really find a place because they've never learned to trade they don't know anything about business and he said so what tends to happen is they tend to go into um jobs with very weak and watery benchmarks and he said one of those is journalism and he said so a lot of them basically become court reporters you know court stenographers for power like people in the middle ages you know, like you would get like a, a benefactor, you know, wealthy benefactor in the Middle Ages, like Shakespeare, you know, and uh, he would have some rich guy and he would write poetry for the rich guy. And it's basically propaganda. And he said that's the modern equivalent is all all of these these college kids who really don't have any useful skills. They become court propaganda, state propagandists. And so that was interesting from the 1930s. Well, it's interesting you mentioned that because when I was trying to change my vocation, essentially, I want to get paid to write. But as you probably know, very few there's very very few ways to actually get paid to write. You know, nobody wants to pay writers. So I I took the uh, the easiest entryway, and that was into journalism. But I realized that they even the entry level journalism jobs like required they require they wanted like J degrees like degrees. And I'm thinking it's like well that's kind of crazy. It's like I'm not gonna go to like two or three years whatever of school just to. Uh, just to get the same entry level job, I eventually tricked someone into getting me the job, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> and you know before the year was over, I had won a national award for investigative reporter. All to say, it's not that it's not that hard, but I mean, it's like uh, you know a lot of that stuff you can pick up. Now, uh, you you had mentioned that uh, you know we have more people with white call uh, white co uh, collar jobs, and and because I guess we don't have you know there's less people with with uh, practical skills. Do you think there's a correlation between the fact that uh, 
I mean, we know that, you know, people know how to do fewer things. Uh, I think the old joke is that, you know, men don't know how to change tires anymore. And I think there's, uh, there's some truth to that. But do you think there's a correlation between the fact that we have less practical skills, you know, especially with our hands, and uh, a lack of critical thinking? I mean, you look around, you would thought by, that by now everyone had picked up on the fact that uh, mainstream news is, is, I mean, it's just strictly propaganda. Yeah, no, that's a really profound point. You know, I don't think I don't think I've ever read a study on that, but that would deserve, you know, like four hundred thousand dollar grant. <laughs> that's a really I'll great take study. it. There was a there was a book though. I'll mention this. Uh, there was a book called Microtrend Squared uh, by Mark Penn, and Mark Penn is a man of the left, and he ran Hillary Clinton's campaign when she first ran against Obama. And uh, Mark Penn, interestingly, as a man of the left and as a Democrat, he was he made m very many admissions, assuming he's got like a sympathetic audience. He just assumes other Democrats are reading. And the things that he, he makes admission to, uh, you know, uh, one, one of them in, in, in the book, uh, he had a chapter called The Influential Elites. And he talks about that the more someone stays in college, the more propagandized they've become and the less critical thinking faculties they have. He said that they basically are trained to uh, uh, obey authority rather than critical thinking. And he said that there's an irony that people who, who go to trade schools have far better developed critical thinking faculties. And people who tend to get advanced degrees, that if the New York Times says it, it must be true. If if the, the Southern Poverty Law Center, he, he mentions it must be true. And he actually, as a Democrat, he, he went a, against the uh, Russian collusion narrative with Trump. And he said in there three times, there was no proof for this. There was no evidence for this. But if you were a college graduate and you were watching Rachel Maddow, you're like, oh, this is an authority figure it must be true mm. you know without any evidence without any critical thinking and this was from a democrat you know so so yeah i mean like there is a, a definite correlation between people who you know the longer they spend like uh noam chomsky another man of the left he said that uh university is not a selection mechanism for intelligence it's a selection mechanism for obedience and that's basically what we see we see a lot of obedient people and they just they're they're so easy to manipulate and trick and it's it's sad you know